And also in, in terms of, of the church. You were supposed to pray every day. I'm assuming we do that, right? At 9 and noon and 3. That's what we're supposed to be praying. But if you come to church, it has more effect, more power. And so you would come to church and, and to pray. Can you see the scene now? The church. The Pharisee comes in with all his fine clothes. Maybe his face is all puckered up because it's a fasting day. He sits up near the front. And he says to God, look at me. I'm not like other men. In fact, I thank God I'm like other men. They're terrible, they're mean, and they're not religious like I am. And so, thank you for making me, me. In fact, I'm glad I'm not like that guy right over there. The tax collector. He's terrible. Now, on stage, can you hear now? Far back. Whisper. Far away from the altar. Lord, I'm a sinner. I am in need of your grace and your mercy. Have mercy upon me, a sinner. And Jesus said to the crowd, Who now goes away from there, justified before God, <coughs> that is a relationship with God? It is the man, the tax collector, who knew his relationship. He knew the difficulties of life, and he knew that he needed God, and God's grace in his life. Now remember how, when, when Tom began to read, how, why Jesus told this parable. For those who thought more highly than they ought to. You see, we are equal in God's eyes. Did you hear the children? We are equal. We are equal <coughs> things. Some of us are a little better than this and that. Others are better than this and that. But overall, we are who we are. Um, but sometimes we, we put each other down and sometimes we make ourselves look good. I have a brother, by the way, who, uh, who always calls me on things that when he thinks I'm being too full of myself, he'll say, you better thank God that Jesus loves you. Because right now, he's the only one. <laughs> and brings me back to home, that's right. Who do I think I am? Let me tell you a funny story. Probably had nothing to do with the sermon at all. He didn't go to church much, but he came to a little church. And a little, one of the first little churches I had required uh, me, asked of me, if I would do an altar call each Sunday. And oftentimes, this same lady would come up. She would fix her makeup and everything. So he knew she was coming. Well, my brother didn't know her. So during that singing that at the time, he made an altar call, those would like to give their life to Jesus or who has a, a concern and wants to come to the altar and pray today. Well, Sally came right down here. So after church, we went out to eat because, all right, what trash did that woman do? I said, well, that's between her and God and her pastor. Well, she must be evil because she came up there. She goes, she's probably not like our family. I said, get off of it. I'm not telling you what she had to say. <laughs> that was between her and her God. But she come and had a concern. And so she's no better or worse than you. Get out, he said. She must be. She came up here. We say that to each other often to put each other down. Because she came and had a need. Where did she bring it? She brought it to God. We don't tell God how wonderful we are. We're saying, oh God, help me. Forgive me the mistakes I've made. Let me live a better life. Let me be a better person. When I'm full of myself, remind me. Remind me. Um, one time I was in my height of glory. I was in seminary. And the seminaries, two seminaries in Ohio were thinking about merging into one. And they picked two students from each seminary to sit with seminary professors and two bishops. And we met in this really fancy hotel downtown Columbus. All expenses paid. And I was thinking very highly of myself. I was chosen. I'm the top, the cream of the crop. I'm trying to decide on lobster or steak. And 
all of a sudden, this woman, this large Italian woman with red, poofy hair, came up and I went, oh my gosh, I know her. And what's she going to say? She came up and smacked me in the back. Turn you out! Well, she didn't use that word. <laughs> how are you doing? And I said, I'm doing all right, Mabel. <laughs> now, how are you? And she says, how's your mom and dad? Blah, blah, blah. You know? And again, remind me again, bring me down to earth. This is who I am. <coughs> I may be here representing the university and the seminary and representing the student body, but after all, I am just me, this person, this background, the needs, love, a center of Christ's redeeming, standing in the need of mercy like everybody else. Oh, I still love that song. It's hard to be humble when you're perfect. I used to believe that now it's just a fantasy. <laughs> when you begin to see who you are. So I would say to you as we gather this day, may Christ have mercy on you. May the Lord have mercy on you. May Christ have mercy on all of us. Let us pray. Thank you, O Christ, for coming to us. Seeing no difference in us, no color, no male, no female, nothing except to see a person, a human person, female and male, who are an object of God's love, who came for redemption for all of us, for those things that we don't do, what we ought to do, those mistakes that we sometimes make, the sins that we have committed. But to remind us again that we are new creatures and we are loved and we are cared for. And so we can go into the world with head held high. But also seeing that others are my brothers and my sisters. Children of God. Be with us, we pray then, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.